Okay, here we are back inside Matrix Gold. If you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. I hope the video is useful and helpful in your designing process. If you're a return viewer and subscriber, thank you so much for the support. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you have not hit that uh, subscribe button yet, please uh, do so and hit that bell for notifications. That would be awesome. It would really help me out. And I would very much appreciate it. <laughs> so uh, uh, let's get started. Today I, I thought I'd just kind of do like a beginner type video. Uh, and we're going to make a little pendant. Very easy, I think. Uh, but there will be a lot of different tools that we'll be using that you may not be aware of or uh, you do know about. And uh, this is just one way to use them. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, first thing I'll do is just grab me a circle. I'll go to my creation layer, of course. I'll go start from F4. And we'll draw that. We'll make it a fairly large circle. Uh, somewhere around here should be fine. And then right away I'm going to go ahead and we want to add a little spice to it. So we want to give it a gem. And we'll take the gem and go down to a, a cushion square. And we'll come in here and drag it down. Not real big. We'll, we'll just do a 3 millimeter. That's fine. Uh, and we'll hit enter. We want to go with the design more than we want to go with the stone. So we'll grab that stone and right away we'll just go ahead and uh, go to settings and slap a bezel on it. Uh, we won't do a lot of manipulation with the bezel, uh, but we do want to do a little bit. We want to drag this angle out a little bit, and we want to drag it down a little. We kind of want it uh, pretty close to the t table R stone being at the top of the bezel. Uh, maybe a little bit deeper than that have to hammer it down after all but still that should be plenty uh, and then uh, what we need to do is uh, I'm not a big dome fan uh, so we'll go ahead and uh, we'll bring that dome down just a little something like that and we'll go ahead and hit enter accept that and right away we'll just grab uh, this uh, curve here the, the circle that we just put out we'll go to our tools and profile placer right here uh, and we'll slap a profile out there and we're going to change that profile so we'll go over to dynamic commands library and wait for these to load up and we'll select something a little bit different than what we've been using something like this one here and hit select and right away we'll do a little manipulation here we'll drag that down to maybe around uh, uh, around a two perhaps and I think it's a 2 already in height, so we'll just leave it there. And we'll hit enter. And we'll just go ahead and sweep that. So surface, sweep 1, select our circle, select our profile, and hit enter. And we got something like this. Okay. And we'll just, because we can manipulate all this, it's all pretty much uh, para uh, dynamic right now. So we'll hit enter. Now it won't be. <laughs> uh, so we'll go to our uh, solids and we'll come down here to a uh, fillet edge we'll select that we'll go to our blend edge right here uh, with our profile or preview yes we'll select this edge this edge and the one on the inside here and uh, we'll go ahead and hit enter for for the preview but we want to select all and change it to maybe a point two and hit enter and I just want it to smooth those sharp edges off, so we'll go ahead and hit enter here. And we'll check our surface. Varies. Closed. Okay. Uh, so we'll select uh, all that yellow right now and just kind of hide it for right now. So we'll turn it to gray and hide it. Never know when you might need it. Uh, and then right away we'll go to our curves. Uh, menu and we'll extract an ISO curve and we want that line right in the middle there right there over a little bit right there should be fine and hit enter and then we're going to go to our solids and we're going to put a little rope in there so we'll do a rope we'll select our curve and we'll hit enter and we want to make that a little bit larger not that big something like that there looks good we won't do any adjustments on that, but you can change the the how how many threads or curves it has. So you can do all that over here. 
uh, let's see which one is it turn distance so it'll make it further apart or closer together you can adjust that if you want to uh, and we'll go ahead and hit enter so we have that and I'm going to take this so I know that it's not connected and we need to do that at some point in time and change it to a different layer so I have that alright and now what I'm going to do is go ahead and select my gemstone go to all my viewports and I kinda wanna uh, right now it's parametric so if I select edit in my dynamics I can go ahead and drag that uh, stone up and my bezel will come with it so we want it a little bit above our item there somewhere maybe around here we can always adjust that later which we probably will so uh, we'll go ahead and hit enter for right now uh, and now what we want to do is we need to go back to curves or you can go over here to your recent commands uh, did I not uh, uh, maybe I did, don't have it in here Oh, extract ISO curve right here and we want to take it from the low side here not all the way to the bottom but pretty low somewhere around here that should be fine so it's not all the way on that edge but it's pretty close and then we'll hit enter and then I want to extract an ISO curve from my bezel so I'll select my bezel select an ISO curve and then we'll put it to 180 and maybe drop it down just a little We'll see how that goes and then we'll hit enter something like that and right now I'll just go ahead and turn everything off uh, I just want uh, to see this curve in my ISO curve so I'll take that I'll turn it to gray and so we have this out here I'll go back to my curves and go to uh, arc uh, command right here and then I'll go to arc direction with my quad snaps on and I'll select that quad there and that quad there and go to my right view and kind of just give it a little curvature alright so I have something like this now what I'm going to do is go ahead and sweep that so sweep two uh, this will be my first rail this will be my second rail and that'll be my profile and hit enter and I have pink showing up so what's that mean pink showing up means that my direction is in the wrong uh, way so I'll go ahead and hit enter I gotta bring that back so I can see it now if I click on my surface and type in DIR and hit enter you can see the white arrows are pointing down so that means my norms are pointing down so I'm just going to flip those and then hit enter so I have that surface there and right away what I'll do is I'll just take that surface go to my transform and we'll do an auto base and we'll hit uh, enter from here and we'll take that auto base we'll drag it up out of the way we'll change it to a little friendlier on the eyes and then right away I'll go to my curves you don't have to do this this is just what I like to do uh, I'm going to go to from object here and I'm going to duplicate those borders on this here select objects to duplicate it won't take it for some reason so I'll back out of it I'll select it and bring duplicate uh, border is what I want not edge duplicate the border and hit, uh, there it is so I'll just go ahead down here to my color where I ha my surface is on and turn it off and right away I want to give me a mid line there so with my mid snaps on I'll click to this mid over to this mid and there we go so now I'm going to take that curve that I just uh, the border and I'm going to explode it okay so explode it so now they're all individual pieces and I'll just go to my top view it's probably easier uh, so we'll kind of work from this area and what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that curve and I'm going to go to point object and bring drop down menu and then go over to the very end here where it says divide curve by number of segments and I'm going to hit select on that uh, it says 4 but we want to change it to a 10 and hit enter actually I don't need to do this yeah I don't need to do this so we're gonna back out of that sorry 
we're going to grab a line and put, draw one line right there on the end okay and we'll just go ahead and go to uh, transform and array uh, along curve all right so we're going to array that along the curve select objects to array that'll be this one hit enter select uh, path curve that'll be this curve here and it says 2 but we're going to change it to 10 and hit enter okay so there's our objects and hit enter one more time to close out the command and now what I'm going to do is go ahead and select all those and I'm going to mirror them from my midpoint in my line here and switch them over to the other side okay so we have that really I only needed two of them but I needed them in the correct spacing uh, so uh, what I'm going to do now is I could use the parametric blend but I don't want to have to adjust everything so I'm just going to go ahead and go to the blend I don't need it parametric uh, so I'm going to go here to here and then I'm going to right cl click and bring it back and go from here to here alright and now I need to be able to work with it a little bit so we'll go to all viewports for right now alright uh, and then we'll go ahead and select this curve here it doesn't matter which one to start with uh, and then we'll go to tools uh, profile placer uh, and my profile it looks like it's upside down so we'll go ahead and uh, you can do it over in your dynamic commands by typing Z I'm just going to hold down shift and bring it, whip it around uh, and then I'm going to do a little manipulation here on this. I'll take it down to uh, 1.5 and I'll bring it into a 1.5 holding down shift and then I'm going to go to my library over here in the dynamics command and click on that and I'm just going to take this one right here and hit select and close that out alright and then I'm going to go ahead and place one on this other side and of course is it placed it upside down so hold down shift and whip it around to the top there and then I'm going to hold down shift and go right in my middle here with my intersects uh, on and place one right there and of course it's uh, upside down so I'll go ahead and drag that around and I'm going to actually make this one a little smaller. I'm going to make it a, about a 1.1. All right. And then I'll hit enter. Okay. And now I'll go ahead and select that other curve. Go back to my profiles. And we'll go ahead and make this one a 1.5, I think it was. And then we'll make it a... Uh, one, what was it? One point. Oh no, no, no! no. Don't want to do that. Okay, now I have to go over. Well, I'm just going to delete that and start over. There we go. Uh, so we'll take that. We'll go back to profile placer. And what was those curves? I think it was a uh, one point five and a. and then we'll go back to our uh, library here and pick that same uh, profile and hit select yeah okay that's it uh, and that looks okay and we'll go over and drag it to this other side over here and we'll probably have to no we don't have to do we have to flip it no oh my gosh okay so they're all out there so we'll go ahead and hit enter now we'll do a little sweeping, so we'll go to surface, uh, surface 1, we'll select this one, we'll go this profile, this profile, this profile, hit enter, and we'll just drag that out just a little, and we'll hit enter, and right click, bring back uh, sweep 1, and select this one, this one, and this one here, and hit enter, and we'll just drag that out just a little. Something like that, and hit enter. 
Okay, so I have one going down, one going in, but they're pretty close, okay? Uh, so from here, what I'm going to do is go to my transform again and go back to my array along curve and uh, select objects to array. That'll be this and this, and then I hit enter. Select path curve, that'll be this one here. And 10 items, that's fine, 10 looks good, it stops right there, so I'll hit enter. And then I'll take this one, delete it, and this one, delete it. So that's what I got right here. Okay, so from here, what I'm going to do is first turn on my bezel and my gemstone, so all, everything's back out there. And then I'll select, turn on my auto base there. And I'll go to uh, transform to smart flow, select my uh, base surface, that'll be my auto base, select my surface destination, that'll be this one, and go to objects, uh, get on the right side here, and I'm just going to select all these objects here, yep, and then hit enter and wait. <laughs> and it'll take some time that's a lot to flow out there so uh, bear with me here I think the results you'll find interesting when it flows up there there we go okay uh, so let's take a look it looks like we need to flip everything so I think the I think it's the yeah, I think it's the UV, the V direction. So we'll go ahead and click on that, and we'll wait again. And that has to redo all the geometry and flip it over to the other side. So it'll take a little bit of time. So we'll go get some coffee and come back. <laughs> I've done that a couple of times when working on Matrix. And it's still giving. You can tell the. the Oh, did it flip it? Looks like it's... No, yeah, there we go. Okay, so there they are. Alright, so th that's up there. Now, I can go ahead and do two things. Uh, if I look at my rail here, it's only like around a millimeter, half or two millimeters, or something like that. So I can do a couple different things here. I can go ahead and select all these things and, and uh, thin them down a little bit but they're only like maybe one and a half millimeters so we'll just go ahead and accept it and I'll do some manipulation with the other items so we'll wait for that to load up and then I'm gonna take this and uh, as you can tell it's not it's sticking through our item right so what we want to do is we want to go ahead and just make this a little bit thicker so that our items are in it. How thick is it? Uh, let's see. One, two, maybe two and a half or something like that. Uh, and let's take a look from the underneath side. Okay. So I could probably drag this up a little bit. And I still have room here, so I could make it a little bit thinner. All right, and let's bring, where's our rope at? Let's bring back that rope. And let's go ahead and take a look at this. Let's take this surface and hide it. And let's take our gemstone, go back to our dynamic commands, and let's just go ahead and bump that up. Let's see what we got here. There you go. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. So if we put it on, uh, well, let's go ahead and accept that. Got something like this going on. But there you have it. Uh, it's a pretty cool design, I think. Looks pretty nice. Make a nice little pendant. And all you have to do at this point is we don't need this anymore. So we'll turn it to gray. Uh, and we'll keep all this out here. Yeah. Looks good. You could take this here and you could, you know, thin it down a little if you wanted to. 
so that it's not you know so it's not so you could manipulate this you know work on this for a while however you want to or whatever but uh, for the video sake and your time we'll just keep on going uh, so let's go here let's go back to uh, this view here and let's uh, the only thing you have to do now is go to I think it's your tools no no solids no settings yeah settings and grab a bell and drag a bell out oh wrong one I got a big old bell now <laughs> So we'll go here. Let's go to the top view so I can get a good look here. All right. So now we just start doing manipulation on the bell, uh, and it's all in your parametric or dynamic commands areas to work on. So the first thing we want to do is probably the jump ring. So we we need to make that bigger, of course. Uh, let's make it about a two millimeter. Oh, internal diameter about a 1.4, and we'll drag that down into our item there and we'll drag this one on Oop, that's everything huh so we want to go ahead and drag that back out and drag everything in and then we want to go ahead and go back to our uh, uh, profile here and let's do the center here let's get this uh, width out I want to make it fairly nice size about there 1.3 yeah and let's go back to our and make it a little bit bigger there make sure it's in our center drag it back into our item and let's go ahead and change that profile on the the rail there the pendant head and oh not that one no 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 this one uh, we'll go to the top profile and we'll give it a little uh, something extra uh, let's see what do we got let's go with something like this here and hit select and then let's go ahead and do that to the same one uh, on the bottom there you don't have to you can manipulate it however you want uh, alright so that looks good let's go to our right side uh, we want to it's it's a pretty large pendant so they're going to maybe want a pretty big bell on there so uh let's go to uh let's see yeah our rail here five point maybe a little bit in and let's go back to our we want to make it a little wider so Profile height, bottom width, profile, internal height, open that up to maybe at least a two, and width, we want that thickness to be a little bit heavier, yeah, there we go. And we'll just drag everything up, kind of put it in there, and we are pretty much done. Well, the only thing you have to do at this point, we'll go ahead and hit enter, accept that, and we'll change it here. The only thing you have to do now is just go ahead and uh, group everything to, uh, together, right? Or balloon everything. So with rope, what you have to do is, uh, well, what I do, I should say, is I uh, ungroup it uh, first. So I, I break it down into rails, okay? Uh, and then I go ahead and do the balloon. So balloon union, well, first surface will be this one. Hit enter, this one here, enter wait for it wait for it there we go hit enter and then right click bring it back out enter enter back of that right click first select first surface that'll be this one enter enter and basically it's just going through there and piecing it all together so uh, I'll go ahead and finish it up but that's really all there is to it uh, 
and it makes a uh, really I mean pretty cool pendant I think we'll hit enter there uh, and it's something that's pretty decent you know, oh that you'll have to go back and f edit that bell you don't need it that deep right so go back in there and grab that bell take it up to where you think it's nice hit enter and you are good to go after you bullying everything together so I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did please 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 hit that subscribe button leave me a like and a comment thanks very much for watching and good designing